First Kings chapter number 20. First Kings chapter number 20. If you got it, say amen. amen. Verse number 1, And Ben-Hadab, the king of Assyria, gathered all the hosts together. And there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria, and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto them, Thus saith Ben-Hadad, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also and thy children, even the goodliest are mine. And the king of Israel answered and said, My lord, O king, according to thy saying, I am thine and all that I have. So here's the bad guy coming to the good guy, saying, I'm going to come and get this, and you, you better not do nothing. You know what the good guy does? Just bows down to him. Uh, and let me say this, we got some people today uh, that are up there in Washington and even in the house of God that the devil says, hey, let me have this. Instead of putting up a fight for your family and for your home, you know what you're doing? You're just letting them have it. Not putting up a fight. Now I want you to look at verse number 5. And he said, well, this is going to be that easy. Let me come get some more. Verse number 5. And the messengers came again. And said, Thus speaketh ben Hadad, saying, All, Although I have sent unto thee, saying, Thou shalt deliver me thy silver and thy gold and thy wives and thy children, yet I will send my servants unto thee tomorrow about this time. And they shall search thine house and the houses of thy servants. And it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes, they shall put it in their hand and take it away. So the bad guy said, Hey, I'm coming to get stuff. And they bowed down and gave it to him that it's that easy, I, you know what, I'm going to go step farther and I'm going to take a whole lot more than what I wanted the first time. And then finally the king of Israel gets smart. Thank God for somebody to stand up. Verse number 7, Then the king of Israel called all the elders of the land and said, Mark, I pray you, and see how this man seeketh mischief. For he sent unto me my wives and for my children and for my silver and for my gold. And I denied him not. I love verse number 8. And all the elders and all the people said unto him, Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Hearken not unto him, nor consent. Let's pray. Father, we love you this morning. God, I count it one of my absolute greatest honors. God, to be here this morning. Lord, to celebrate 22 years. This man, God, and his family being faithful to you. And Lord, it's rare. God, nowadays, preachers, Lord, just so easy to give up. Lord, in all these past couple years, Lord, it's, I've seen a lot of preachers, Lord, give up. But Lord, because things got hard, but Lord, thank you for a man of God, Lord, to stand in the hedge when things isn't easy. Thank you, Lord, for standing there, Lord, when things do get hard. Lord, every family in here could attest, Lord, that that man of God's been there for them, Lord, in the wee hours of the morning, in the late hours of the night. And Lord, pastors are very, very hard to come by. Lord, I thank you for my pastor probably right now preaching off the front porch there at the Parsons of 1832 Paddlesville Road. God, I pray you'll give him a new, Lord, just a new vigor this morning, power to preach and unction. Lord, I do pray for us, God, you'd help us. But, Lord, I pray, God, anything that gets the glory, Lord, it'll be you. Because it'll be 0% man, 100% God. And the church said, Amen. We find kind of a strange story this morning. We've all heard of 1 Kings 17 where we find the providence of God. Elijah goes down by the brook and man the ravens come by. Could you imagine uh, Brother Jordan I believe said yesterday could you imagine ravens dropping off a happy meal at your, at your, at your doorstep. Say amen. Uh, man no telling where that buzzard's been and man he's, he's dropping food and isn't it just like God to show up right on time? We see the providence of God in 1 Kings 18 we find the power of God Elijah took those prophets of Baal up there and proved to them that his God was the main God. And may I say this, I'm glad our God is still the main God that's in charge. We find in 1 Kings 19 the presence of God. Elijah's running for his life. And, and everybody knows the story. Man, that Elijah's trying to run. And he gets underneath a tree and he wished God would take his life. And if we're honest this morning, there's all been times, if you've been saved any length of time, there's been times in our life where we feel 
like being in that position. Can I get a witness right there? There's all been times in our life where we felt like throwing up and, and giving up and just, just there's got to be more than this thing. But I'm glad when we're in the molly grubs, when we're overwhelmed and we're in the low times, we feel like giving up. Brother Josh, I'm glad that for the sweet presence of God to come by. And Elijah got stirred. And we find in 1 Kings chapter number 20, no mention of Elijah. This is between King Ben-Hadad and the king, uh, man, there of Israel. And we find that, uh, man, that the people of God were in a trouble. There was something about to happen in their place. I want you to look, uh, man, at verse number 1 and 2. And Ben-Hadad, the king of Assyria, gathered all of his hosts together, and there were thirty and two kings with him, and horses and chariots. And he went up and besieged Samaria and warred against it. And he sent messengers to Ahab, king of Israel, into the city, and said unto him, Thus saith Ben-Hadad. Uh, I was thinking about this message, and uh, how many of you know the McCamies? Now, I believe they retired now, and went, man, moved on, and uh, Sister Peggy McCamey, I, if she, if we need her in most of our Baptist churches singing songs. Uh, man, just about Brother Ray, man, get up there singing without a doubt I'm safe. We could have stopped right there and shouted 1,500 miles from now because I know without a doubt I'm saved. And Sister Peggy, man, you go on YouTube and you find that song for the God on the mountains, the same God in the valley. You don't know what song I'm talking about. Uh, Brother Doug, she gets right there at that one part and she always has that hanky out and boy, she's feeling it coming on. She's a whopping that wrist and she's about to kick in that leg and I, but before you know it, you're getting excited because she's excited about what she sings it about. Yeah. They get to that second chorus of that song, Brother Josh, Brother Peter, and here's what she says. At the high pitch, I'm not going to do it because it sounds terrible, but she says, he's still God. That dawned on me, and it, I want to preach this morning with the help of God for a few, few short moments on He's still God. Preacher, what is He still God of? I tell you, verse number 1 and 2, He is still God regardless of legislation. I'm not here to be political this morning, but we all know that there's a mess up there. Can I get an amen? We all know that things have come in our life in the past few years that wasn't there previous. And may I say this, the, mo the more I read this, the more I saw this world, Brother Josh, coming through. Verse number 3, Thy silver and thy gold is mine. He's not asking a question. Uh, the big dog here isn't asking a question, say, Miss Kathy, Brother Randy, is, is it okay if I come do this? He's not doing that, Brother Phil. You know what the big bad guy is going to do? He's going to come in, not ask no questions. Somebody say amen. He's not going to come to Pastor Foster and say, is it okay if I do this? Listen, he's not there to get asked questions. He is there to make statements. Verse number 3, Thy silver and thy gold is mine, thy wives also, and thy children, even the goodliest, are mine. May I say this, that big bad legislation wasn't coming in and asking if they could do anything. He fought. He thought he was going to march right in and take whatever he wanted. And, and may I say this, shame on us that we've given up some things here in the past few years of our lives that, that they wanted and without a fight we stood for, we just let them have it. And may I say this, I believe wholeheartedly that if anything we should stand for in these days and hours in which we live, it's for the good old Word of God. And I believe, I'm old school, you got to forgive me, but I believe if the Bible is against it I believe I'm against it I don't, I don't care what Biden says I don't care what a government says I believe if God is against it I believe there's a repercussion I believe America is going to have to face hellfire and damnation because of the things we did not stand for I'm here to let you know this morning no matter what law they pass no matter what thing may come across his desk and he signs it I'm telling you he may think he's in charge but there's still one that's above him who's in charge uh, you say preacher this world's a mess uh, I don't know what else is going to happen can I say it really doesn't matter because Joe Biden's not in charge uh, the governors are not in charge the mayors ain't in charge there's still one hallelujah and it's God and he's still in full control he's still God regardless of legislation may I say this that we find the plan that let me say this right here 
There's always a plan the enemy's planted. I'll be a little worldly for a moment. How many of you ever watched Home Alone? Please be honest with me. Some of y'all being not spiritual. Be honest with me. You got TV in your home. You might as well raise your hand. How many ever watched Home Alone? Man, that very first one, the McAllisters, they had all their aunts and uncles over. I, I love that movie. It's, I love it. Man, as a little kid, I wish I was that smart. Say, man, I'd have been filthy rich today. Praise God. Uh, Brother Doug, I, I watched that movie, and I couldn't help but think that, uh, man, that you, you find that guy with a gold tooth, the policeman. How many know what I'm talking about? He wasn't really a policeman. Do you know that? He was the exact opposite of what a policeman was. He was a thief and a crook. But let me say this. That policeman that day was not there to make sure they're okay. What he's doing, he's checking out everything in that house. You hear me? Now, I find something spiritual in a lot of movies nowadays. You've got to pray for me. Brother Doug, that policeman, my favorite part is that pizza guy comes and nobody has money to pay him. Need 120 bucks. They're running around. They finally give the money. And the whole time that family is so consumed and so busy with doing everything else, the enemy's sitting there planning where he's putting his next attack. Can I say this right here? I'm very careful to say, preacher, that a lot of people are so busy doing everything else and the enemy's standing right in our households taking a mark of what he's about to take. He's standing there, and we're so busy. Man, I'll be honest, down there, we got all kind of football and all this stuff going on, and it seems like our world, me and Ms. Taylor, we don't. We get one bag unpacked, we're going again. We got boxes slung everywhere, pictures slung everywhere. We got things going, going. But I don't want to get so busy that, that I realize there's a plan that the enemy has for my life. You say, preacher, what are you talking about? John chapter 10, verse number 10. That the thief cometh not but to, for to steal and to kill and destroy. Yeah. May I remind you it doesn't matter if you've been saved 40,000 years or you've been saved for four days. There is an enemy after us. Yeah. And may I say just like that home alone, if we're not real careful, we're going to lose some things that we'll never get back because we're so busy. That enemy just sitting there smiling with his gold tooth. That, that camera turned one time and that light hit that thing just right and that gold tooth shines. You know what he's doing? He's faking it. But you know what he's doing? He's taking a mark. I'm going to come in here and get that. He, listen, let me say this right here. The enemy just don't show up at your house. He plans. Job 1 verse number 7, The Lord said unto Satan, Which comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and walking up and down in it, you know what he realized about Job? He tried to get in the back door, but he couldn't. Tried to get in the front door and the side door through the garage if they had them back then. Guess what? He couldn't get into Job's house. Why? Because that was a hedge. But why was the devil wandering around? Because he was planning his next attack. May I say this, ladies and gentlemen, that the evil one always has a plan. Say, preacher, what you're talking about? The Supreme Court ruled in 1962 that prayer was banned from schools. The Supreme Court ruled in 1963 that devotional Bible reading in schools is unconstitutional. Also, that rotten Supreme Court ruled in 2015, this makes me disgusted, that same-sex marriage could be legalized. Let me ask you this right here. I'm not, man, I, as a youth pastor, listen, I, I've heard everything under the sun what goes on in them kids' noggins? I really thought me growing up was bad, Jordan. Well, these kids are talking about smoking stuff I've never heard of, being involved. I had one girl one Wednesday night preacher. She come, had a long sleeve shirt on. She accidentally raised her shirt like that, and I could see blood. I went to her afterward. I said, girl, you all right? What's wrong? She, she rolled her sleeve up. Man, her, her, her whole arm was slitted like that right there. And the only thing I could think in my mind is the devil's trying to kill that girl. And taking that was a 14, 15 year old girl. Let, let me say this right here, and you might not like this, but it's the God given truth. If, if somebody would have stood up in 1962, I wonder where we'd have been at today. I live in this generation now, and people will tell me all the time, your generation's rotten, your generation's sorry, your generation's ungodly. And may I say that may be the case, but ma'am, sir, where were you back in those days standing up for God? God. Eh? May I say this generation is bad. It's 
very common sense. That this generation is bad because this generation didn't stand up. That generation, mom and dad's generation is bad because brother Josh's grandma and grandpa's don't stand up. May I say this, people don't stand up now because they think we're going to be called a weirdo or, or whatever you may call us. But honey, I believe if any time, the time to stand, I believe now is the time to stand. I wonder five, six, seven, ten years from now, where will our churches be? Where, where will our school systems be? God forbid. If somebody somewhere don't stand up for what's right. We're so busy. We're so busy. But may I remind you, no matter what they push on us, God's still in charge. You'll find they come to get what they like in verse number 3. Let me say this. The enemy knows what you love. You say, preacher, what you're talking about? I want you to look at verse number 6, letter E, and, 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 and the houses of thy servants, and it shall be that whatsoever is pleasant in thine eyes. They're coming to get what we like, but you know what they're also coming for? To get what we love. My dad said this always. He said, what you love the most, you spend the most time around. And can I say this, ladies and gentlemen, the enemy knows what we love. Y'all all heard this quote, give the devil an inch, he'll become your ruler. There's a lot of people that's given to the devil in these few days which we live. Now the devil's taking over their life. I, man, there used to be a boy, we got it talking about this, we went to Arizona, brother Kevin and, and sister Nikki out there, good people, we preached in Arizona a couple weeks ago. Y'all remember that camp meeting we had? Man, we started talking about it out here. Man, it got on like Donkey Kong got there in the parking lot. Now, I've never seen such in my life. But, Brother Doug, there were girls here that was present. That boy got the hooping and the hollering. Man, the presence of God. Eh? Man, I'm talking about the glory of God fell that night. Eh? And it went from there. It got on them in the pew. Eh? I'll never forget that young girl raising her hands. Eh? Boy, she been just screaming out and praising God. Eh? Pre Preacher Doug, it didn't even get there. It got there. But we was on our way out that night. Dad had the bus parked over there. We all built that new building. And man, we whatever was up there got in there and it followed us out the door. We was about to hop on the bus and y'all that was here remember it, man. We was out there in the parking lot. It was probably 10, 10.30 at night. We was just about to get on the bus and I heard a hoo, hoo, hoo. I'm talking about, honey, it got on. Whatever latched on here, it latched on in the parking lot. Aren't you thankful the Spirit of God can get on you at any time and anywhere? Eh? Well, we had service out there in the parking lot. People that was in here started coming out there. I don't know what happened out there, but boy, God fell in that parking lot around that bus. People are praying and are crying. Boy, and are shouting. And boy, we found God's presence like never before. But the sad reality is, ladies and gentlemen, some of those same kids that, that felt the Spirit of God, some of those same boys, Brother Jordan, Brother Christian, Preacher Doug, that, that knows what it is to be filled with God, have the power of God in their life. Now they woke up this morning and seeing, and seeing all around them. Boy, I'm telling you, this thing's big in my heart this morning. I looked at Brother Kevin, we were sitting there talking to them, more tears streaming down his eyes, talking about the good times and the presence of God and it may seem like the devil I feel the Holy Ghost thank you God it may seem like the devil has the upper hand but brother Kevin Griffin with tears streaming down his face here's what he told me he said they may be out and seeing Jeff but they know what's inside of them can I remind you that God is still in charge that God is still God no matter what goes on in our life God is still God those kids have to lay down every night of their life knowing what they felt, knowing what God's done for them in their life. And one of these good old days, bro, I'm telling you, Brother Josh, it wouldn't shock me none if they get their hearts right with God and God does a miraculous work. Why, preacher? Because God's still God. God's still God. And may I say this, whether you agree with this or not, Rosa Parks said this, I love this. She says you stand for something or you fall for anything, not the song. Say amen. Today's mighty oak is yesterday's nut that held its ground. Papa, Grandma, let me ask you this this morning. If you don't stand now, you know how bad it was in your days. 
How bad is it going to be 10 years from now? My little niece didn't have a uh, man Harper in, in elementary school, kindergarten, first grade, had a not, I don't know, no other, had a sodomite as a teacher in public school. She come home and asked her mom, she said, Mom, she, 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 don't, she don't love a man. And her mom was like, you're right, it's wrong. You know what she's instilling her little girl? That sin is sin and sin is wrong. Somebody help me right there, please. Can I say this? It makes me puke when I see a man and a man together and a woman and a woman together. You say, preacher, why does that make you mad and make you want to puke or regurgitate? Well, I'll tell you why. Because when God does something, He does something right. Eh? God does not make mistakes. I, every time I think about it, I think about what Dad says. God made Adam and Eve, and God did not make Adam and Steve. Somebody help me right there. I believe what God does, He does right and does not need to be redone, despite what they're trying to pass on to us eh, and make us think that y'all need to bow down to them and give them their thing. Let me tell you what. They may lock me up today after hearing this, but I believe a male husband and a wife is it's the will of God. I believe what the Bible says. Eh? Regardless of what those jaybirds say, God is still God. God is still God. Regardless of legislation. But let me say this. Look with me in verse number 12. God is still God. Regardless of limitations. Preacher, what you're talking about? Look with me in verse number 12. The big bad dude didn't like when the good people stood up. I bust your bubble this morning. They're not going to like us if we start standing up. You know why they don't mind us now? Because we're not standing up. You start standing up and see what real friends you got out there in this world. Regardless of limitations, look at me in verse number 12. And it came to pass when Benadad heard this message, he was drinking. He had the kings in the pavilions and he said unto his servants, Sat yourselves in array. He's mad. Ooh, he's ticked off. Somebody didn't win against what he said. And they set themselves in array against the city. And behold, I love this right here. Oh, I love this right here. There came a prophet. I say this right here. Before the first sword, Brother Peter, Brother Jordan was ever drawn, they had a man of God with a word from God. You think it's mere coincidence that God has given you a man. Brother Randy has kept you over 22 years. And it, it blows my mind sometimes. Miss Nett, sometimes Christian Jordan being a preacher's kid, Sydney, I'll sit there and say, why in the world's dad preaching on? What, what, what's, what's wrong with him? Man, nobody's going through that junk he's preaching about. Y'all got to forgive me because I'm human. Somebody help me right there. Sometimes dad will preach on stuff and I scrap. Dad, you, know, dad, you might have missed the boat. A couple weeks later, there's a family or myself will go through the exact same thing that he preached on. You know what God's doing? God's giving a man of God with the Word of God before anything bad happens. Right. Hey. Yeah. Hallelujah. Look there in verse number 13. And, and there came a prophet in unto Ahab and the king of Israel saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hast thou seen all this great... Isn't it just like God to rub it in? God come to them and say, hey, look at all those bad guys there. What you going to do, big dog? What you going to do? Look, look how great they are. Look at verse number 13. Behold, I will deliver it into thy hand this day, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. And Ahab said, by whom? This is very, very important. Watch this now. And he said, thus saith the Lord, even by the old men. I must have read that wrong. Even by the strongest men. That's not what he said. Even by the young men. Look at verse number 15. Then he numbered the young men. Verse number 17. And the young men. Verse number 19. So these young men. I'll never forget November 1st, 2009, 635 on a Sunday night. My mom was leading. I had been blessed in the youth choir. Eh? I don't know what it was back then, but man, it'd get on like Donkey Kong in church. People go to shouting and now, man, you walk in there, it's a little weird. It's just, it's just not the same. Man, we walk in there and we had a, a, a return, an air return on the right side over there where I was standing. 
Brother Josh, I was sitting there, standing there singing whatever, man, trying to follow mom, and boy, it got foggy in there. I'm talking about real foggy. Y'all might think I'm crazy, but Preacher Doug, I, I heard something coming out of that uh, register, coming out of that vent saying, I want you. I looked at Blake. Y'all know Blake back in the days, man, he always dressed sharp, looked good. I looked right there and I said, what you want, man? He said, what are you talking about? Shh, your, your mom's leading singing, we're singing. I said, Blake, man, what, what do you want? He said, shh. Brother Phil, I, I stood there again. I have been blessed. God's so good to me. I heard it again through the vent. Y'all, I'm telling y'all, think I'm crazy. I heard it again, Brother Phil. I he said, I want you. I didn't know what else to do. I went and grabbed my dad. And Brother Josh, as a 19-year-old young man, graduated high school. I got my whole life ahead of me. I'm telling you, some of you are going to think I'm real crazy, but I wanted to be an airplane pilot. There's just something about a big hunk of metal hanging in the middle of the sky with nothing around it that just blows my mind. We flew to Arizona the other week and I had to fight her over the window seat. I was like a little kid. I lift that, I just stared at it. I was mesmerized. Got to see a lightning storm. It was awesome, man. Just seeing the lights. And that was my dream in life. Boy, I, I went to Dad. I said, Dad, I think God wants to use me to preach. His yeah, eyeballs got about that big around. I'll never forget. He grabbed my tie. He shoved me back there in the nursery in that little classroom. And my dad said this. I'm waiting on some huge... I'm going somewhere, I promise. I, oh my God, i got to hurry. Hey, I'm waiting on some big theological explanation of why God wants to use me. And son, it's going to be good. you got to do this and that. This is what my dad told me. He said, go run away from it. Dad, have you lost your mind? Dad, I'm telling you, I want to do something for Jesus. Son, go run away. I looked right at my dad that day. I said, Preacher Doug, I said, I can't run away. Man, he had men come out through there and men pray for me and they said all kind of encouraging things. But you know what he was telling me? That this thing's not a game. You say, Preacher, can God use me to preach the gospel I'm telling you, if God can use, let me say this right here, God used the bush for Moses. God used the raven for Elijah. God used the whale for Jonah. God used the ram for Abraham. God used the rooster for Peter. God used the donkey for Balaam. God used the dove for Noah. Honey, if you are acceptive and want to be used by God, can I say that's all God wants? God don't have to have all the accolades. God does not have to have all the things in life well, all of God is looking for is somebody to be a, a usable and man be used in the sight of God you say preacher I'm not old guess who won this battle it was the young men not the old ones Hey, preacher, I'm young. I got the rest of my life. I was 19 years old. I had stuff I wanted to do. But as a 19-year-old young man, I, I knelt down. I said, God, if you can use me. God, if you can do something to me. And here we are a few years later. God's still using us. God is, is doing something with our lives. I promise you, God still can use anybody at any time for anywhere. Hey, preacher, I feel that God wants to use me. Can I tell you the best thing you can do? Is open up and let them. Your preacher would attest it's not the easy road. It's not easy serving God. But I'll say this, it is the best road ever serving God. There's the young men. God is still God regardless of legislation. God is still God regardless of limitations. I'll give you this and I'm done. But I want you to look at verse number 22. The Bible said, And the prophet came to the king of Israel and said unto him, Go, Strengthen thyself and mark and see what thou doest. For at the return of the year, the king of Syria will come up against thee. Verse 23, And the servants of the king of Syria, the bad guy, said unto him, Their gods are the gods of the hills. Here's what they're saying. Their God that they're fighting, we fought them on a hill. He's just God and only good and helps them when they're up high. Boy, they about to be mistaken. Look with me there in verse 24. And do this thing. Take the kings away and every man out of his place and put captains in their rooms and number thee an army like the army that thou hast lost. Horse for horse and chariot for chariot and we will fight against them not on the hills, in the plain. And surely we, we shall be stronger than they. And he hearkened to their voice and did so. Let me say this. 
They thought God was just God of the hills. I'll be honest with you, I'm glad God's God of the hills. Some of you don't even look like God's been good to you. Let me say it like this. I'm glad there's few days when the washing machine don't break. Somebody help me right there. When you go out there and start the car and that thing's not on E, it's on F. Somebody say amen. You grab your phone and you look and you actually got money in the bank and the cam. You open, you cover it up and there's food. Can I say this? We serve a mighty good God. I, I'm glad we have a God that is good to us. I, I'm glad for a few days where now we get to be with soreness as wings as eagles where there's no problems I'll be honest with you that don't happen much you say preacher why are you excited about that because when it does happen boy I love it just get to ride around me and Miss Taylor having a good time serving God things are good are happening no cars are breaking down we got food in the kitchen hallelujah as you can tell boy we got money in the bank things are looking good Thank God for the good times of life. Thank God for the mountaintops of life. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, the true fact of the matter, most of our life is spent in the valley. They said they're gods, just the gods of the hills. Why don't you look at verse number 27? The children of Israel were numbered, and all were present. They didn't lose a one. Why? Because they had a man of God with the word of God and went against them and the children of Israel pitched before them like two little flocks of kids. But the Syrians filled the country. They're outnumbered. In the valley now, they wasn't outnumbered before. But now they changed locations. And now they're outnumbered. And are they scared? I'm sure they are. Like, like verse number 28, there he is again. And there came a man of God and spake unto the king of Israel and said, Thus saith the Lord, because the Syrians have said, Boy, I'm telling you, i got to hurry up, good gracious. The Lord is God of the hills, but He's not the God of the valleys. Therefore will I deliver all this great multitude in thy hand, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Sis, could you come play something if you don't mind? Let me say this right here. The enemy has surrounded them. The enemy has looked and said, hey, we got them beat. We got them outnumbered. Their God is just God when things are good. He's just God on the mountaintops. But may I remind you that God is still God regardless of legislation. Thank God for that. God is still God regardless of limitations. Thank God for that. I can look back over my life and see I'm just a nobody serving as somebody trying to tell everybody that Jesus Christ is Lord I say this right here I feel strongly right there boy if you want God to use you can I say this there's never been a better time young man to give your life to God there's never been another awesome opportunity that you give yourself to God may I say this in closing God is still God regardless of location Say, preacher, what you're talking about? The first battle was fought on a hill. And guess who won? The people of God. Look with me there in verse number 29. They pitched over against the other seven days. And it was so that in the seventh battle, the, the day of the battle was joined, and the children of Israel slew the Syrians and hundred thousand footmen in one day. But the rest fled to Aphek into the city, and their wall fell upon twenty and seven thousand of the men that were left, and Ben Adad fled and came into the city into an inner chamber. Preacher, what you talking about? They thought if they could man, if they could man, find another location where God wasn't, they could win. Can I let them in on a little secret this morning? You can't run and you can't hide. Can I see this this morning? I've been in hospital rooms preaching where uh, this dear saint of God at Bessie Road, her son done some bad things. 60-year-old man, had to, he was in prison and dying of a brain bleed. I walked into that man's room and I was there for two days straight, 48 hours with that lady. I didn't leave her. Boy, that, her, her son had done some bad stuff and they had cops at the door. I've never seen nothing like that. His hands were handcuffed. His, and I asked the cops, I said, man, give the guy, he's not going to make it. They said, we can't. 
That dear saint of God over there just a squalling, just tore up. Preach, I didn't have, I didn't have no words. I was just there. Sometimes people don't need a word. They just need a shoulder. But I leaned my shoulder down. I started praying. About that time, Brother Phil, I heard. <laughs> so what in the world's happening? She said, I'm telling you. She said, man, it's bad. It's, it's real bad. Man, it's bad right now, Miss Annette. But here's boy, good God Almighty. I'm telling you, she said, Jeffrey, I know this is a bad situation. But she said, I feel God. And can I say this? I'm glad my God's not classified to just the church. I'm glad I serve a God who can go to the hospital rooms. I'm glad I serve a God who can get on your Walmart. I'm glad I serve a God who can go to a funeral home. Honey, I'm glad no matter where you are, we have a God who's still God. No matter where you are. Say, preacher, I'm going through some things in my life. Preacher, I'm going through some things. Can I remind you, God is still God. No matter where you are. Hallelujah to God that blesses my soul. I'm glad God's still God. God's still God no matter where you are. Head bowed, eyes closed, we're standing this morning. Remind you this morning, church, I come all this way to tell you this morning, God is still God. No matter where you are. God's still God. People are moving. Some of you young men, God's been dealing with your heart. You know what you need to do. You know what you need to do. Come give your life to Jesus. Watch God do some great things. Preacher, you come. Father, I've tried my best to mind you. Lord, I feel in my heart. Lord, there's some young men. Older me and God. Brother, Brother Jordan nailed it on the head this morning. Being an and Christian. Lord, I pray for this church. Lord, I mean it. Lord, if my home was here, I'd know where I'd be. This church has been a blessing, encouragement. God, to me and my family. Lord, I pray you'll bless this man of God and his people. Lord, I pray God will ask some people. God, behind them, some young men. God, that are willing to fight. Lord, I pray in these day and ages, we've got some moms, some dads, some grandmas, some grandpas, God, who are willing to take a stand despite what legislation says and still stand for what's right. Lord, I feel in my heart, God, you want to take a young man. He's got a lot of plans for his life, a lot of things he wants to do. But God, there's something you want to do in his life. Lord, in the stillness of this moment, God, help him to do business with you. In Jesus' name, heads bowed, eyes closed. Preachers, come in. If you enjoyed today's message, head on over to ibcforums.com and click on sermons. And don't forget to check out our other links in the notes section of today's broadcast. As always, thanks for listening.